Welcome everyone. This is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band repair. Uh, today we're going to be going over parts one and two of our five-part series, and this is going to be on removing dents from a saxophone. So today, Ryan, can we just talk about uh, a couple of anatomy things like specifically what is a bell or which part of the bell are we going to be removing dents from right. and and all that good stuff yeah so what i have here is obviously the the bell section the body tube is is not here but when i refer to the bell a lot of times i refer to just this area in here okay when you get into this area up here this is what i would call the flare okay how it curves away and in the very edge i, I usually call the rim okay rim uh flare the bell section, and then down here, this curved part I would call the bow. Okay, so just for for so we're all clear on the on terminology and anatomy, uh, we're going to be dealing with dents. A lot of times that happen in this area right here. Okay, the player is playing and bumps up against something, and a lot of times you'll get dents in here, and then obviously in the bell flare. So, okay, there we are. cool. And then the next question that I have is. Do you use a dent barrel or a dent ball for this type of work? That's a good question. So we, we have both. We have both a barrel and we both have a, a ball. And they have their uses in particular areas. When I'm dealing with the, the bell section here, this kind of straighter section, I'm going to be dealing with the barrel. Okay, it's, it, you can see I can have a little bit more working surface uh, to work in this area. When I deal with the with bow, dents in the bow section, I'm dealing with a ball. You can see a lot more curvature, fits a lot more of those contours. I don't really ever use a ball in this bow section. What will tend to happen is it will actually press dents up out of it so you get kind of uh, humps mm. almost. Um, so that is why I use a barrel when okay. I'm dealing with the bell. So while you're so you're gonna thread that on there, that's uh, that's the Music Medic 7-inch dent barrel. It's stainless steel and it's uh, it's got a half 13 thread. This is a three quarter inch diameter dent rod. We've got it chucked into our vise, and we'd like to use a, a slightly thicker rod for this repair. Tell me again why we like to do that. Uh, you don't get as much rebound. Okay. It's very, it's very stable. Um, you know, you could stick this one a little bit further out. If it were the, the, the thinner one, I would have to kind of keep that further in towards the, the jaws of the vise. But I like using the big one because again, I get more reach. I can use some berries and tenors, and then again, very strong, very stable. You can see barely any flex yeah. with this. So that's the um, three quarter inch rod, and then we have the five eighths rod, which is the thinner one. Correct. A little more flex, a little more rebound. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're dealing with dents in this section. Obviously, we don't really have dents quite yet, so we gotta have to make them. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to let's see here. Hopefully this won't. Oh, there we are. Oh boy. Okay. So you can see right there. I'll get kind of a close up. You can see how the light changes so we have a, a dent it's going this way okay. um, so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be working from i like to call the corners from here in towards the center and here in towards the center i'm not going to put that barrel directly under that dent and try to push it up a lot of times you'll get some unevenness and waviness we're going to kind of gently press that dent out from the edges okay so my working surface on the barrel is not quite the top here. I like to use basically this section right here. It's a little bit flatter. Again, if you have too much of a radius, you'll end up pushing dents up and out. But if you're using a little bit more of a flatter surface, uh, you get a little bit more even dent pushing out. So, so right here, I'm going to line it up. I'm going to start from this edge and I'm going to press towards the center. Okay. When I do that, some techniques, I'm, I'm using my, my arms completely straight and I'm using my entire body as you can see, to kind of pre press in. I'm not here like this, pressing with my arms. Okay, I'm using my entire body. I'm just going to kind of slide it a little bit towards the center. I'm going to switch. Now I'm over here, and I'm working this way. I am kind of sliding that. So right. you're kind of pressing the bell over the mandrel. Exactly. Okay, it's, it's going away. It was, well, let me see. It's kind of hard to find. Oh, it's right right there okay just a little bit so i can just get back under there so i'm working this side again towards the center i can actually see the shape of the metal i can actually see the reflection how it changes and where the dent barrel is 
in relation to my dent. So you want to have plenty of light. Absolutely, yes. Type of work. Yes, a lot of light. And that's what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this reflection. And I can see how it slightly distorts right here. So there's still a little bit of dent. Get in there again and using my whole body to press and roll from one side. Check my dent barrel placement. There we are. Awesome. All set. Yep. That's great work, Ryan. All right, cool. Now let's go over the next thing, which is the bell flare. How do we bell remove flare. a dent from the bell flare? It's a very tough area. This here, it's a very tight radius. Okay, and again, it's a typical uh, uh, dent to have. The player's out, maybe he uses a gig bag, and the side of it gets dented down. So something like, ooh. Okay, something like that, where you can see the lip right here, slightly bent down, and I can start to feel a hump right here. Okay, so for this, I would use this bell rim tool. And you can see it has the contour that actually fit, fits. You can see right there. There's two sizes. There's the modern. This is modern alto for modern instruments. And then we have the vintage for vintage instruments. This is more of a modern bell. So I'm going to be using the modern side. And you can see how I can match that contour up with the underside of that flare. That helps me get the most amount of dent removal. For this, i got to switch my dent rod around. Cool. So you're taking the dent ball off. You're going to be using the other side of the dent rod, which the three-quarter inch dent rod, I think it's four feet long. One side, the threads are half 13 for standard uh, dent balls, and then the other side is 3 8 16. The, the, the bell rim mandrels have a 3 8 16 uh, threaded hole. Yeah. The thread on there. Two tapers, like Ryan said, one for modern and one for uh, vintage, vintage bells. Yes, it's easy to see that because we actually have a marked here. This is Alto Modern, and it has an arrow pointing to this side. So if I'm going to be using the Alto Modern, that's the side I'm going to screw it onto. If I'm working on a vintage horn, Alto Vintage with an arrow pointing to here, this is where you would screw it on. And it is important what side you screw it on. Because okay? if I go and screw this, I want to work with the the modern side, and I'm, I have it over here on this side like this, anytime I press, it's just going to loosen that up. So you have to make sure you thread it on the correct side. So here I have Alto Modern pointing that way. Anytime I do my work, which is going to be from this side, it's not going to loosen up. Okay. So we have Alto Modern. There's our Alto. Let's find our dents. Yep, there we are. Okay. I line that up. So you've got your bell lined up over your mandrel, and then what is your first tool that you typically use? If it's if it's a very sharp dent, I mean it's 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 up like this, and it's not you know rounded to match the the flare. I will use a dent hammer. So okay. A lot of times I'll either use a plastic or Delrin. Uh, I won't use metal because hitting that metal um, will actually work harden the brass. So I will use a little bit of this and just kind of tap those high spots down. As long as you have that mandrel directly underneath of it, you can just tap them down. And again, I'm just very lightly using those glancing blows, just trying to tap those high spots down. My next go-to is this slide lock roller tool, okay, or any kind of rolling. You can use a regular burnisher, or you can use a rolling burnisher, but anything that you're kind of flattening that out. So I could use a hand burnisher here. All right. Line that back up. So as you can see, I could use a hand burnisher and get in there and form that against it. You can use some kind of protectant layer in between. You can use mylar. Uh, you can use, you know, any kind of, you know, lubrication uh, to minimize the scratching on the lacquered surface. But that's how I would use that. But really, I like using the slide lock roller tool because this is a rolling burnisher. So that's going to cut down on the amount of marring and scratching. It's also going to do a better job because you're rolling it out. You have constant contact with it. So again, I'm going to line it up. 
bit snug against my mandrel. And you can see, I'm just rolling it out, getting all the contours, just like so. I can feel that hump. If I need a little bit more pressure, I like using just the hand unit by itself. Okay. Right? Cause it's, it's for this, again, this roller is steel, this mandrel is steel, this is brass. This is the softer material. So it's going to smush. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't want really want to do too much as far as putting too much uh, pressure onto the surface to really smush that brass out. We're, really, we're just kind of moving it back to where it needs to be. And you're rotating the bell a little bit um, as yep, well. So I can get all there. You can rotate it or you can move the, the tool, but definitely getting all the surfaces. Um, but if you need a little bit more, you can use the whole unit by itself. Slide that in like so. Maybe I want to have that much stick out. Back to where it was. And now, as you can see, I can kind of get a little bit more so you've got downward that, force. And you've got it braced up against your shoulder mm -hmm. there. Yep. You can get a little bit more force to it. The other thing you can also do is you can flip this attachment onto the other side. Now that taper looks like it would be good for getting up into a, a harder to reach area or so, if there was cl clearance was an issue. Yep. As you can see. Oops. So you're pressing the, you're holding the bell in the mandrel, not too much pressure, and then not too much pressure with the, uh, the your right hand, which is using the, yeah, yeah. the slide lock, slide lock roller. Very cool. So there you go, and you can see just rolling that hump out, taking the shape of that mandrel. We are. Wow, that's awesome, Ryan. Yeah. No, you made quick work of that. I make awesome. it look easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. This has been our Wednesday Wisdom. This is where we share tips, tricks, and information on saxophone repair and everything else in the band repair world. Uh, next Wednesday, we're going to be going over part three, which is removing dents from the bell section uh, of the, sorry, not the bell section, the bow section of the bell. We also have a online course coming up April 29th, uh, where Ryan's going to be giving a full day on advanced key working on saxophones. And we also have a basics class coming up in June. So stay tuned for that. Um, I think, I think that is everything for right now. Um, if you guys have any questions or if you're enjoying watching this uh, stream, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any requests or anything, contact us. And uh, until next time, happy repairing. Here. <laughs> Click the